models, did you have them? Was there ever for you guys a light bulb moment where you were looking at another woman, whether she was real or fictitious, and thinking, oh wow, that, I want to be like that. Who was yours, Karen? I didn't have a role model. I, mean, I had lots of role models because all the women in my family were very strong. And so I had lots of role models around strength of character. And on an aesthetic, in an aesthetic way, there was this, you know, uh, you know, good style there as well. But it was more about the, um, just the strength of character and purpose. I'm not a bit surprised to hear there was good style there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mother there. never came to pick me up in slippers. <laughs> yeah. school, you know. Yes, we can be thankful for that. <laughs> what about you, Varys? Um, two come to mind for me. Um, the first one would be Oprah. I would always watch Oprah after school with my mum. And I think what captivated me about Oprah was just her ability to connect with people. I loved it. I just loved watching her um, episode after episode talk to all these different people from walks of life and just be able to listen and I just love that. I love seeing that. I think that was um, nice to, to see growing up and it kind of inspired me to do that in some way, you know, in my career now, you know, no matter who I meet, to just show compassion and, and to listen to different people's stories. So, yeah, Oprah inspired me a lot growing up and I, I just love that she talked about all types of situations and issues in the world and I think that I think that's also kind of missing now in in, uh, in social media just being able to talk about all those different issues so yeah. a wide variety. I miss Oprah today I think we need a, we need Oprah back um, and the other one would probably be, be Beyonce that sounds really commercial doesn't it, it sounds really typical but I think everyone loves Beyonce but for me the reason why I loved Beyonce when I was young is because she was just a queen like she she commanded everyone's attention she was on top of her game I saw that she would always work hard and I just I, I just saw her and I was like okay one day I want to be that powerful as an artist and even though I wasn't doing music I was in dance I still wanted to have that exact same you know influence on the world so yeah, Beyonce. Do you know what I love about Beyonce is that she is absolutely unashamed of how hard she works. Mm. You know, in a culture where people say, oh, you know, I just threw it together. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know that Beyonce is it's putting the hours. Yeah. That's just pretty amazing. What about you, Rosanna? I think when I was little, I was really enamored with Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc? Yeah, she was... She was a tough guy, and she went out there and fought, and she wore great armor. <laughs> <laughs> but I think also as a, as a young girl, I was just like that. Uh, she she was really showed me that even out of time that that you could be outside of the norm. I mean, she did kind of have a terrible ending, but well, I was going to say she did have the courage of her conviction. But she had the courage she? of her conviction, and she knew how to fight, and she could take on the guys. So I think even I was definitely a young tomboy. So, but and then as I got older, I think my, I mean Grace Jones, mm, she's so a legend, wanted, legend. So wanted to be Grace Jones. So wanted to be Grace Jones. It was like, and then, but I was like Karen. I had these incredible women in in our family, and so I had incredible role models, and they always had busy hands and they were loving, and they were strong, and they had, I watched them negotiate really tough times. So I, th I think, think, think my family, my family's right up there, and the support they showed each other as sisters, because we, we all lived in the same house, so, so, and, and then as, as I really started to get into it, a lot of my role models I realised were often in the mythological, Mm. sort of style too mm. because that's where I found my great heroes Nafanua, another warrior woman so I don't know why there's always been a fighter in me but <laughs> but but they're there is there a sense growing up in New Zealand of being on the edge of the world you know all three of you are leading from the edge but that edge place you know there's distance on the one hand but there's space on the other hand you know space to think and to dream, maybe. Were you conscious of where you were as young women? Very conscious. And I, I think that's one of the things that brought me into the fashion business, that it meant, if I did it right, that 
travel would be an intrinsic part of my life. And mm. I was always very torn to travel. It's in my DNA. And, uh, and I think that's why I designed my career in the way I did, so that travel could be part of my job. And I, I, you know, I limit it to uh, no more than 100 days a year away from home. But I get to go to the best places in the world. Mm. And I'm so happy when I'm stepping onto an airplane. So that's really important to me. Because, you know, and I think that's partly because we are so far away. And I mm. don't like that sense of isolation. I like a sense of being able to reach out and touch. Well, that's the interesting thing about this global moment in feminism, isn't it? There is that connectedness, and you get that on, you know, with a hashtag maybe, or with Instagram, or physically, you know, when women come out together and march. Mm. Would you guys march? Have you ever have you ever been part of a protest? Well, I was brought up by my auntie taking me to the to a lot of feminist marches, to the anti-apartheid marches. So, so that that's always been a big big part of my experience in terms of gathering and and the power of. Of, of the collective voice when you're standing amongst hundreds, thousands and standing up for something that, that you very strongly believe in and something that, that when you are demanding change. And so it's interesting now with the, with, with the hashtag movement because the, um, you can have that same effect you know, through this digital sort of world. So it's, mm. so it's, a, it's really exciting times for, so for somebody like me who's come from the analogue world, you know, is this sort of... And also to note, you know, that, that protesting isn't just about placards. It's about beauty. It's about power. It's about mana. So it's about dance. It's mm. about dance. 